Good morning and welcome to Southern Hills this morning. We do want to extend a special welcome to all of our guests and visitors this morning. And I hope everyone had a, had a good holidays and a Merry Christmas last week. Um, also welcome to those of you who joining us via live stream. Again, welcome to Southern Hills. I hope everyone had a chance to pick up a bulletin on the way in. If not, I, ho I hope you have a chance to pick one up on the way out. It's got plenty of information about things coming up in our sick and shut-in list um, here at Southern Hills. Um, I did see Herb Jones come in, so it's good to see the, the Joneses here. He is currently taking radiation treatment, so we do want to remember uh, Herb and Barbara as he's uh, undergoing his treatments. Also, we want to continue to remember anyone that is uh, dealing with the COVID-19 virus. Um, we know that that's pretty serious here in Tennessee, so we want to remember everyone in our prayers uh, going through that. Uh, just a reminder that Breakfast with Dan is coming up on January the 8th. If you have not signed up and plan to be a part of that, um, we're asking that you do sign up in the back foyer. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to see me or Dan, and we will do our best to answer those questions. Also, there's volunteers needed to, to help out with some things as we prepare for our morning worship services uh, during the year of 2021. There's a couple of sign-up sheets back there in the back. Um, if you're able to help out with those, if you would, uh, just sign up for that. Also, we want to thank uh, Jay Cottrell for the flowers that are up here um, in the front. So thank you, Jay, for, for helping us out with those. Um, also coming up January 15th through the 18th is our family ski trip. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to see Jennifer or myself, and uh, we will answer, do our best to answer those questions. Uh, those are the announcements that I have. Lee Glasscock, one of our elders, has an announcement, and then he'll uh, open our service with prayer. Good morning. It's our last Sunday morning together before the new year. We know each of you have prayerfully considered and purposed in your heart the offering today that is our special contribution Sunday. In this most challenging years, the elders would like to thank you for your cheerful and giving heart as we seek to do the Lord's will for His church here at Southern Hills, our community, and mission points throughout the world. We look forward to the work that will be accomplished in 2021 because of your generosity. Now a separate announcement. Beginning next Sunday in an effort to serve the needs of all while trying to unite our membership, we will resume our normal schedule for Sunday morning services. Since there is still and probably will be for at least the next few months ahead the need for social distancing, we will need your help in making this plan work. We will use our fellowship hall as additional capacity while still worshiping together during one Sunday morning service at 9 a.m. Our deacon and elder families will be contacted to assist in assuring success in this approach, utilizing the fellowship hall. This will assure we keep the proper distancing in the auditorium and seating always available for our older members and visitors. There will not be an 11 a.m. service beginning next Sunday, January 3rd. Our Wednesday nights will continue with a 5 p.m. and 7 p.m. just as we've had. The one change starting January 6th is that we will only live stream at 7 p.m. for Wednesday nights. We trust with your help we can follow the guidelines and precautions necessary to make this transition and keep everyone safe and healthy. This will require masks, especially as some use the hallways to and from classes. Your cooperation is expected and appreciated. We look forward to one day never saying the words social distancing again. Let us enter this morning into worship and prayer. Lord, as each one of us and those that will be at later services have purposed in their heart, look to see how they can help at the end of this year with the special contribution that is being taken up. For the areas that it will serve, for the much good and teaching and preaching that will be done, for those in need, whatever it may be that those monies will be used to your glory. 
We pray for our city, city of Nashville, and the events of Christmas Day. For those that were physically affected, those that are mentally affected with it, for many that have been displaced, lost their homes and businesses, their livelihoods, that you be with them. We're thankful for those that are first responders that were there on the scene and continue to be and help and not only that situation, but all of the things throughout each and every day. Lord, we pray that our new schedule meeting together will revive us, bring us closer together while still being distanced as we need to, but closer in heart by being able to worship together. We pray for that effort. We pray for our safety, for good health. Most of all, spiritual health, as that is our goal, for heaven as our home. Lord, we're thankful for those that are improving, that have been sick. We pray for those that continue to go undergo treatments, for problems they may have within their family, for those that may have walked away from your church. We pray for them. Lord, we're thankful for Dan and his willingness to step in and serve, preaching to us this morning in Garrett's absence. Lord, as we are on the one year, we're also very thankful for Garrett and his family for the work they do here. Pray that you'll continue to bless him, his family, with good health, most of all wisdom. Lord, we love you. We want to get to heaven. We're thankful for the church that meets here at Southern Hills. We pray all these things through your son's name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our first song will be number 238. Number 238. And if it's convenient, would you please stand? Mm. Holy. You may be seated. Prior to our scripture reading and prayer, we're going to sing the first and third stanza of 805. 
your Bibles this morning and like to follow along or follow along by reading the screen. We'll be reading from Acts chapter 28 verses 16 through 31. Acts chapter 28 verses 16 through 31. Now when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was permitted to dwell by himself with a soldier who guarded him. And it came to pass after three days that Paul called the leaders of the Jews together. So when they had come together, he said to them, Men and brethren, though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who when they examined me wanted to let me go because there was no cause for putting me to death. But when the Jews spoke against it, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, not that I had anything of which to accuse my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have called for you to see you and speak with you, because for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. Then they said to him, We neither received letters from Judea concerning you, nor have any of the brethren who came reported or spoken any evil of you. But we desire to hear from you what you think. For concerning this sect, we know that it is spoken against everywhere. So when they had appointed him a day, many came to him at his lodging, to whom he explained and solemnly testified of the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus from both the law of Moses and the prophets from morning till evening. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. So when they did not agree among themselves, they departed after Paul had said one word, the Holy Spirit spoke rightly through Isaiah the prophet to our fathers, saying, Go to this people and say, Hearing you will hear and shall not understand, and seeing you will see and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts in turn, so that I should heal them. Therefore, let it be known to you that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles, and they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had a great dispute among themselves. Then Paul dwelt two whole years in his own rented house and received all who came to him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching the things 
which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no one forbidding him. Let's bow in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we come thank and being thankful for us being able to gather and, and uh, worship you here. We're, we're thankful for everything that you've given us o over this past year. Uh, help us to think about the uh, uh, blessings that we've received this year and not the uh, uh, different things that have, have come up that uh, are hard to, to bear. And please uh, be with those with uh, are sick with the, uh, and uh, especially those with the, the uh, virus, heal, heal them and, and uh, help to uh, uh, be with them and, and help them in their treatment. We also ask for uh, blessings on our country. Uh, we are in uh, much turmoil oil and, and uh, need your guidance and your help. Be with uh, our leaders and uh, make them uh, help them make wise decisions. Watch over us now as we go through the, the further exercises of the, the service and uh, watch over us as we go to our many homes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a few moments we'll be taking of the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> We're going to turn to number five and sing the first and the second verse to help prepare for that. <clears throat> You didn't pick up one of these when you came in this morning. If you'd raise your hand, someone will bring you one of those. This morning I'll be reading from Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Romans 5, 6 through 11. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. 
Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For with while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by death of his Son. Much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Let us pray. Lord, as we have this opportunity with these emblems that you have given us to reflect on the death of your son, we at this time take of the bread that reflects on his body. May we clear out all the other thoughts from the world, from the things around us. May we truly commune as an individual with you, reflecting on the ways that you have blessed us through the death of your son, examining ourselves inwardly. It's in your son's name I pray, amen. Let's pray for the cup. Lord, as in these times man searches for vaccines that may work for some, but not for all, may not be readily available to all, hard to find at times. Your blood is readily available. It's the perfect cure. Your blood covers all sin. Our Lord died once for all, never to make that sacrifice again because it's not needed. We at this time reflect on that and the blood that continues to cover and wipe away our sin. For that we're thankful. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen.
This, as we said, is our special contribution Sunday. I uh, hope you took some time, maybe talked with your family, your spouse, about what you would do today, what you purposed in your heart, what you will cheerfully give. There is a box in the foyer there. Uh, contributions can be placed in it. Also, you can also scan the code that's probably in your bulletin and usually on the uh, wall behind me, not this morning. Uh, but any of the elders will accept your contribution as well. Make sure that gets to the right place. We again thank you for your generosity, all the works that are done through this body that meets here at Southern Hills. Let us pray. God, we are thankful and humbled by the ways that you continue to supply so many, if not all our needs, many wants, many things that are beyond imagination for some of the world to even have or think about doing, going, seeing, whatever it may be. We woke up this morning with shelter, with clothes, transportation, many things that some do not have. But Lord, we know there are those that are lacking in ways of knowing you and your word. And we wish for more than anything to be able to minister to those needs as well. We pray for these funds to be used in the manner and according to your will. We thank you for all of those. It's in your son's name I pray. Amen. If you're using the book this morning, our song of invitation will be number 755, number 755. And just prior to Dan's lesson, we're going to sing number 312, number 312. We're going to sing the first, second, and the fourth stanza. And if it's still convenient, would you please stand again?
may be seated. Thank you for being here. If you have your Bible and want to follow along, I encourage you to turn to Colossians chapter 1. That's where we're going to be with the lesson this morning. It's where we'll also be with the lesson this afternoon at 5 o'clock, and I hope you'll come back and continue this study with me. I'm going to read verses 12, 13, and 14 in just a moment. But before we do that, let me say a little bit about those first 11 verses. Because of time's sake, I'm not going to read those. I'm going to look upon those as if they are an introduction to Paul's letter. That's not exactly right. They're more than an introduction. The longest introduction to any of Paul's letters is Romans. In chapter 1, he writes 15 verses of introduction and finally gets around to his theme only at verse 16, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Well, here, it's not exactly that way, but it's just a good starting point to go on down to verse 11 or verse 12, actually, and begin to read now, I'm starting right in the middle of a sentence. I think you'll recognize that immediately, but that's because we want, that's where we want to pick up the train of thought. Paul says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Now let me give you just a little bit of background to all of this. We saw in the reading just a moment ago that Nathan did in something in verse 30 of Acts 28 that really pertains to this lesson. Paul has been arrested allegedly for crimes. He has gone to Caesarea for a hearing, and he has appealed to Caesar. That means now he's got to go to Rome, so he's at Rome. Technically, he's under what we would call today house arrest, because that verse said something about him living for two years in his own rented house. He's having to provide the place he lives. He's having, I'm assuming, to pay his rent while he waits on the hearing that really never does come in Rome as to whether he is guilty or not guilty. But anyway, Paul is there in Rome under house arrest. In the meantime, somewhere, we think it may have been first at Ephesus, and then later on at Rome, that Paul encounters or is encountered by a man by the name of Epaphras. He's mentioned twice in Colossians, first in chapter 1, then in chapter 4, he's mentioned again in Philemon verse 23. In fact, in Philemon verse 23, he's referred to as Paul's fellow prisoner. But we think Epaphras was converted by Paul at Ephesus. Epaphras then moves on to Colossae, which was, I think, his hometown. And there he preaches the gospel and establishes the church. But the church at Colossae, a church as far as we know that Paul had never visited, a city as far as we know that Paul had never visited. In the church at Colossae, there came to be some very serious problems. And Epaphras had sought out Paul to help him deal with the problems. And the result of that was the letter that we're looking at today that we know as the Colossian letter. Whatever was going on over at Colossae, 
involves some elements of the law of Moses. To some extent, those people were still abiding by and preaching the law of Moses. But having come in were some Gnostic tendencies. Now, we don't want to get into that. That's really complicated. It's really pretty weird as well. But those people who were the false teachers at Colossae had combined elements of the law of Moses. They had combined elements of Gnostic philosophy. They had combined some elements, in fact, of paganism. And they had added to that as well something called the mystery religions, which probably began in Egypt. Now, you've got all four of those things mixed in together. They are being taught, believed, and practiced in the church at Colossae. It's causing some very real and serious problems, and they've got to be dealt with, and the result of their having to be dealt with is Paul writes this letter. The supreme thing that the problem is at Colossae is a denial of the place of Christ in God's plan for the redemption and salvation of our souls. Whatever this was that was going on at Colossae, it was denying the supremacy and the all-sufficiency of Christ. And because of that, it had to be dealt with. And who better to deal with it than Paul, inspired as he was by the Holy Spirit of God? What I want to do in the text at which we're looking right now I want to look at several words that are there. It depends on how much time we have and how much time we take, how many words we will look at this morning. What we don't get to this morning, we'll try to finish up at 5 o'clock. But there are some words here that are tremendously important in the Christian faith. Someone suggested several years ago that if we wanted people to understand the Bible, we were going to have to change the words in the Bible and use different words. That's nonsense. You don't change the words of the Bible. You come to understand what those words are and what they mean and why they are so important to the Christian faith. So let's begin to look now at verse 13. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Point number one is God through Christ has qualified us. He has qualified us to partake or to share in the inheritance. In the Old Testament, the inheritance was the land of Israel that was to be given to the Jews. In the New Testament, however, the inheritance is heaven itself. We'll talk more in just a moment about that phrase, in the light. But there is an inheritance that we are qualified to receive because we are followers of Jesus Christ. Now, the other side of that is this. If we're not followers of Jesus Christ, we are not qualified to receive that inheritance. Two verses from the Bible make that very clear. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he added, no man comes to the Father except through or by means of me. That's Jesus speaking. Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, put it like this. There is no other name under heaven given among men by which we may be saved. The only thing that can qualify us for life eternal in heaven is Jesus Christ himself. Some of you play golf. If you ever expect to play in a PGA tournament, you're going to have to qualify. 
there are people around the world right now qualifying or already having qualified to be in the Olympics next summer in Japan. You qualify to drive a car in the Indianapolis 500 or to be a surgeon or to be a CPA. The difference between that is you qualify yourself by filling out a certain number of requirements. You don't qualify yourself for heaven. That qualification is emplaced upon you by God himself through Jesus Christ. There is nothing in the Bible beginning to end that says anything about us earning our salvation. Our salvation, I repeat, comes from God through Jesus Christ by our obedience to the gospel and faithful Christian living. John 3, 16, the golden text of the Bible makes that crystal clear. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him might not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world should be saved through him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, We're saved by grace through faith, not of ourselves. It is the gift of God. If you've got your Bible open, I want you to look down just a little ways to, uh, well, verse 14 would be a good place to start, but let's look on down at verse 20. Verse 20 speaks about the blood of, of his Christ's cross. That's what qualifies us. That's what gives us the forgiveness of sins. That's what gives us the hope of eternal life. That is what will give us eternal life itself. We don't earn it. You can't buy it. You can't trade for it. You can only qualify for eternal life through the gift of the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 verse 29. God qualifies us through Jesus Christ for a life that is eternal. You see now why there's a problem over at Colossae? Those people who are teaching the false doctrines are saying, Christ is not enough. You've got to have Christ and, and, and. No! Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. But let's go on. Not only are we qualified to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints and the light, but notice the second thing. God through Christ has delivered us from the power of darkness. When I'm at home studying, that's where I study now, of course, I like to sit at the kitchen table and I look across the table out the kitchen window and if somebody turns into our driveway, I know immediately when they do. I see every car or truck that passes up and down that street. The people walking, the people jogging, the people walking their dogs. And I see those delivery trucks. And those delivery trucks have been on General MacArthur Drive every day for the last month, some of them even including Sundays. There goes UPS. There's FedEx. Yonder comes Amazon. There goes the post office truck. What are they doing? They're delivering. Delivering those packages you bought over the Internet from Amazon. Well, the Bible talks about God delivering us. Now, it's not exactly the same thing. I understand that. Because the word here means to rescue or to save. 
But God rescued us, God saved us, and God delivers us from the power of darkness. That's the power of Satan. Men love the darkness because their deeds were evil. But God is light, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, not darkness. And God has delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom or the church of the Son of his love. You saw on TV a couple of weeks ago now, I guess. The fellow took his boat out and got out into the ocean. And the boat began to take on water. Remember that? And when you saw the boat on TV, the stern was under the water. Most of the boat was under the water. Only the bow was above the water. And there was a man clinging to it for his life. I don't know how many hours they said he clung to that. But he stayed there until somebody rescued him. We are rescued from the power of darkness by the blood of the cross. There is nothing more important than that. Anybody or anything who in any way belittles the central place and importance and purpose of Jesus Christ is wrong. Again, the way, the truth, and the life, he delivered us from the power of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of his love. But then thirdly, not only has he qualified us, not only has he delivered us, This is the New King James Version at which I'm looking and which I think is up on the screen. It uses the word conveyed. I tried to figure out how to illustrate conveyed. And the only thing I could think of was a conveyor belt, and I don't think that would do the job. So let's look at a couple of other translations. One translation says, it's the ESV, that God has transferred us. To transfer someone or something is to move it from one place to another. God has transferred us from the domain of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of His love. He's moved us from here to over here. Another translation doesn't use either of those words. It says God has translated us. Anybody who knows anything about me knows that I'm probably the poorest Greek student in the world. That's just the way it is. But when I start working on a sermon or a class... I pick my text out like I did for this lesson. And the very first thing I do now is to get out my Greek text and translate from Greek to English. It takes me an awfully, awfully long time. And by the time lunch comes, I am worn out. But you see, you translate, you move from one language to another with the hope of understanding better yourself what the message of God is so you can better transmit that message to others. Okay, we've been conveyed. We've been transferred. We've been translated. It's all the same thing, basically. Well, finally, at least one more. Not only have we been qualified, not only have we been delivered, not only have we been conveyed or whatever those other terms are, but notice this next phrase, which we'll look at in two parts very quickly. In whom, Christ, we have redemption. And that redemption comes through his blood. And that redemption that comes through his blood is identified here as the forgiveness of sins. What in the world is redemption? The word basically generally means to buy back by paying a price. 
you're in bad need of money and you don't have any, but you've got something at home that you can take down to something called the pawn shop. And you can, as they say, hawk that thing. They'll give you a certain amount of money, probably not as much as it's worth, but they'll give you a certain amount of money. Well, later on, you come into some money, and that thing, whatever it was, is still in the pawn shop window. So you go down to the pawn shop, and you pay, and you'll pay extra because there's interest to be paid. You buy back, or as they say in the pawn shop business, you redeem that thing which you've hawked. The Bible says that we have been redeemed. Not like in a pawn shop, no, no, no. But by the blood of the cross. And because we have been redeemed and because that redemption comes through or by means his blood of, of his blood being shed there, the result of that is that we have the forgiveness of our sins. That's the final term we'll look at. The forgiveness of sins. You know what that means? That means God does something for us through Jesus Christ that we can't do for ourselves. He sins that sin away. He removes it from us so that we are no longer burdened by it because we have been redeemed by the blood of Christ and through that redemption we have received the forgiveness of our sins. It's just a little passage. But it really is big, isn't it? You are qualified. You are delivered. You are conveyed or transferred or translated. You are redeemed. And you are forgiven. And it's all come about through or by means of the blood of Jesus Christ. Does that make Jesus less important? Or does it make him more important? Essentially important. Eternally important. The way. The truth. The life. If you need to come to Christ this morning by obedience to the gospel... Or if you need to come to him and be restored, or if you need the prayers of the church, or whatever need you might have, Christ can meet, answer, and fulfill every need. Please come to him as we stand to sing. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound in time to me.
Thank you. I want to welcome each and every one of you here. If you're visiting with us, we want to welcome you, let you know that we're glad you came our way. We want to thank Dan for the lesson he brought us this morning. We invite everybody to stay for our, <coughs> our uh, uh, Bible study in a few moments. Invite everybody back this evening at 5 p.m. Before we dismiss, we're going to sing the first and the last stanza of number 824. Number 824. Mm -hmm. Some glad morning when this life is over, I will fly away to the love of my house and the shore. I will fly pray with me. Dear great and amazing, awesome God, we love you. We are so blessed to be in your presence today, worshiping you, the creator of the universe. Lord, uh, we stand in awe of your power. I pray that as things uh, around us are stirring and and that uh, we feel unrest, that we remember the things I just prayed, that you are the creator of the universe. You are our salvation. You're our hope, our peace. Lord, I pray that as uh, trials and tribulation come up, that we stand more firm in you. We dig into your word. We find the anchor that is you and your son. Lord, we love you. We're so thankful that we got to worship you today. We're thankful for the message of Jesus, the one that saves us. Lord, I pray that as we go throughout our day and throughout our week, that as we teach our families, our friends and our neighbors, that you are the redeeming power, your son, Jesus. And there's nothing else that can save us. We love you. We're thankful for your son. We're thankful for our opportunity to worship. And Lord, I pray as we move to worship together again that uh, we can continue to consider others and continue to remember that we are here for you and to worship you, Lord. And it's all in this in your son's name. Amen. Amen.